so glad that God is in this place. Praise God. Amen. You know, uh, you can't go to every church and God's in the house. Amen. Praise God. And, and God is here. We want to thank and praise the Lord for all who have gathered together on this special occasion. Praise God. Uh, to uh, uh, the uh, angel of this house, uh, Pastor uh, William S. Snorgrass. Congratulations. Amen. Uh, to First Lady, uh, Sister uh, Snorgrass. Amen. To the uh, uh, Master of Ceremony. Amen. And what a master he was today. Amen. Uh, Reverend uh, Grant Lewis. Amen. Amen. We're so uh, so glad and we're, we're so thankful that uh, deacons are here from Second Baptist. Amen. We thank and praise the Lord for all who traveled with us. Amen. The choir. Amen. We thank you that you let uh, the angelic voices uh, uh, proclaim God's holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Uh, now today I, I would like to go to the book of Philippians, amen. Uh, of course, a life worthy of the gospel. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, and I'll just read the 27th verse, amen. I'm, mine is the new uh, international version, amen. And it says, uh, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then... Whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. A life worthy of the, the gospel. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, we know uh, in the New Testament, we, we do have the Gospels uh, of Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you travel, uh, if you would travel to the book of, book of Revelation, you'll, you'll run uh, into heaven, and they, it talks about uh, four living creatures. Mm -hmm. Of course, the King James Version is say four beasts. But the four living creatures, they also uh, represent Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John, the Gospels. Amen. First of all, you, you have the lion, which represents Matthew. Amen. The lion of the tribe of Judah. And if you recognize, Matthew was, uh, was written to the Jews. Amen. And uh, it didn't explain everything because it didn't have to because the Jews supposed to just automatically know some stuff. Amen. And then we go to Mark. Mark uh, uh, was the ox. Uh, uh, he's a domestic animal. Amen. And uh, uh, this ox uh, uh, was written to the Romans. They were Roman soldiers. And the, and the Roman soldiers, uh, they were men of action. Uh, their favorite word was immediately and straightway. I don't, I don't want a whole lot of details. Just tell me what you want me to do. And I'll get it taken, taken care of. And then we run to the perfect man, Luke. Uh, Dr. Luke, uh, he's the perfect man, amen, and, and as one of those living creatures, that's what he, he represents. And then we go to the last gospel, the gospel of John, and of course that represents the ego, amen. And as John is writing, uh, he's writing to baby Christians. He's writing to those who just accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, and he writes short sentences, but he's very detailed. Uh, he, would, he would explain to you that, uh, uh, I'm talking about Messiah called the Christ amen and he would he would go along there so that uh, you would understand uh, so uh, the gospel uh, the good news amen the word of the living God and we're so thankful uh, for the gospel and, and God's goodness amen amen, amen. Uh, the good news uh, the word of God Mm -hmm. Amen. We know that as we open up our Bibles, amen, and hopefully we're studious of God's word because uh, we need to know God. And the way you know God is through the word. Uh, it's through the scriptures. Uh, matter of fact, that's one of the uh, articles of faith and that you got to know the scriptures. Amen. And, and you have to allow the scripture and spend time in the scriptures uh, so that it can speak to you. Uh, not only speak to you so that it can resonate with you. Amen. So that it becomes a part of 
of you. Uh, in the book of John, it talks about the word, amen, and it, and it goes through the word, and, and then it lets us know that who is the word? Uh, the word is Jesus the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. And, 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 and in the book of Revelations, he said that I am Alpha and I am Omega. Uh, that's, that's the Greek. Now, if he was talking to us in the English, he would say, I am the A to the Z. Amen. And in the language that you get, I, I speak about God. If you if you want to talk about God, then you got to get in the alphabet. And if you talk about Jesus, you're talking about God. If you remember Thomas, Thomas, uh, Thomas said, uh, Lord, can we see the father? And it, it kind of irked Jesus a little bit. Uh, he said, uh, if you see me, you have seen the father. Amen. Some things Christians just ought to know, you know, you just have some instinct about. Amen. And that's the way we are, amen. As, as Baptist folk, we ought to have some instincts about certain things, amen. We know that, uh, that if you don't want the Lord's Supper, that you don't come on the first Sunday, amen. <laughs> There's some instincts that just happen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But this, 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 this uh, gospel, this uh, evangelion is, is very powerful to us, to our lives, and we need to digest it. That's right. Uh, we need to eat on it. We need to nurture it. Amen. And, and then it needs to become a part of us. Uh, we have too many baby Christians that have been baby Christians too long. Amen. You, get to, you got the same old dry prayer that you had when you first got saved. <laughs> There is no relationship. You just say he's my daddy and you never even talk to him. He comes in the room. You don't recognize him. Amen. You, you still eating the best chicken. Amen. When dad comes in, he's supposed to get the best chicken. Amen. You need to recognize when God comes in the house. And when God comes in the house, you wonder why mom's over there crying. You wonder why the children are over there rejoicing because God has entered into the house. We have too many folks that don't recognize when God enters into the house. Amen. Folks getting happy. They get enjoy. God entered into the house uh, as Grant got up here and kept on talking and couldn't stop. God entered into the house. Some of y'all that didn't recognize, y'all said, he talking too long. But those of us that recognize, say, go ahead, God. You recognize that God entered into the house. He tried to talk so fast, it sounded like he's talking in tongues. I don't understand what he's saying. But God got it all. And if you got it in the spirit, you would have got it all too. I was back here, I'd take my glasses off because I had to wipe my tears away. Because there was a spiritual, spiritual conversation going on. And we need to get in that mode sometimes. You know, sometimes you get up here, you, you, you do your deacon stuff, you know. You know, the deacons are the dog, they bark up here all the time. You know. <laughs> they barking to keep the devil away. Y'all know that? Because when Jesus comes, and you know, when Jesus carried the cross up the Via Della Rosa Road, they turned the dogs loose on him and it was nipping him at the heels as he was going up there. But now you got some deacons here and they keep, they, 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 they keep the, 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 the dogs that are, are not a part of the body of Christ, keep them off of them. Uh -huh. So that when the preacher's preaching, he can really do real well. Uh, sometimes when we're up here and, 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 and the dogs ain't doing what they're supposed to do, we can't preach like we're supposed to preach. Amen. We need to hear y'all's amens and y'all's hallelujah. Amen. Y'all need to stand up every now and then when the word of God is being preached. Be spontaneous. Let the spirit of God move you. That's what the evangelion, that's what the gospel will do. We don't get up here just to tell stories, y'all. Amen. We have, a, we have an assignment from God to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we do it, it's a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection. And sometimes you don't know when it's going to hit you. So every now and then you hear an old mother just yell, ah, for no apparent reason. <laughs> the spirit just touched her. Did the power come from the preacher? No, the power came from God through the preacher. He, he, he was able to touch a spiritual nerve. And because you come here ready, you was able to receive. Now, all y'all to come here to look around and see what's going on, y'all, it's so confusing to you. Why are we sitting in church so long? Hey, Amen. I'm sure glad they finally got them carpets there. They used to have them floors and them hard benches. Now they got, at least they got a little comfort in here. 
But those of us that love the Lord and have a spiritual connection with him, we're doing our spiritual exercises anyway. Right. Amen. The choir and sung a good song. We got to stand up. Yeah. Amen. When they get done, we go ahead and sit down. Uh, when, when, when they read the scriptures, amen, they say, for God so loved the world. And since we've been with, been with God all week long, we get excited over for God so loved the world. So we stand up again. <laughs> we do our spiritual exercise. We come in here to praise God. Yeah. And then as we give our all in all to him and, 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 and let the gospel marinate in our lives. Now, if you, just, if you just come here to get fed on Sunday, then it don't work, y'all. One Gelias, uh, the gospel must work every day in your life. Matter of fact, it works 24-7. He has angels that are encamped around your bed even as you go to sleep. One Gelias, there's good news for Christian folk. Now we understand that the devil has declared war on us and he's constantly fighting us, but we ought to have enough sense to put on the whole arm of God. Now when we go to bed at night, we have some other saints as intercessory prayer for us so that we can get through the night. But when we wake up in the morning, we put our armor on and we're ready to go out to fight. And we don't know how the devil's going to come. So we got to deal with the issues as they come. And as they come, we might have to get another brother or sister to come because the battle may get too hot for us. So we call up deacon so-and-so or mother so-and-so and we have the saints begin to pray and watch the devil back off. Y'all got to learn how to work y'all Uwam Gileon. Y'all got to learn how to work y'all gospel. We got Christians, we got all kind of benefits and don't even use it. We rich in houses and land and we walking around like we poor. You better learn how to use the gospel that God has for each and every one of us. A life that is worthy of the gospel. You know, the book of Philippians, that, that's a wonderful book. Y'all know he was in prison. He was in chains right. uh, when he wrote this, this letter. Uh, and, and the strange thing about it, to me is strange, but, but, but as I get around church folk, we all strange, so that's all right. <laughs> yeah, y'all peculiar people, uh-huh. And, 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 and the only one that really likes to be around you is other Christian folk. And that's good, amen. We out there in the world all the time making folk mad just because we walking around smiling and we ought to be frowning. They don't understand that. Right, but when we get around each other, we have a kindred spirit and all of a sudden we get to smiling at each other. And, it, and some folks don't understand that. They, they, they think that we trying to, trying to flirt with one another, but they ain't got nothing to do with it. We just loving us some Jesus and we find out and you got a kindred spirit and I got a kindred spirit and we just want to smile because Jesus is in the place. When two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'm in a mist. So I'm on the job and I got 10 folk that ain't saved, that, that's just doing everything, you know, that they want to do, amen, cussing and fussing, amen. And I've, I've, got to, I've got to say over and over again, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> Because I don't want that junk getting on me, you know. So, I, so I'm doing it, and then all of a sudden another brother or sister come in, and I, and, and I recognize the, the, the sign on them. I recognize the anointing. They're they walking around, they're all oily, you know. You ever been around some oily folk? <laughs> they, they, they just dripping with the presence of God, amen. And, and when they come in the house, amen, you, you feeling powerful now. You feeling all right right now. Amen. But sometimes we have an Elijah experience. We think we're out there all by ourselves. Amen. And then we start complaining to the Lord instead of praying to the Lord. We got to stop complaining and pray. Rejoice. Lift up his holy name. That's the reason why when you go to prayer, you got to start out with adoration. Why do I start out with adoration? Because I got to recognize the God whom I serve. Because I got so much worldly junk thrown on me all the time, I forget about that my God is powerful. I forget about that my God is lovely. I forget about that my God protects me. I forget about that God helps me even when I mess up. So as I adore him and I talk about him and I recognize him, that he is omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, I realize that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, then all of a sudden I have a mind shift. And I recognize that I am walking here and talking here and the blood is still running warm in my veins is because God is blessing me in the midst of my mess. Evangelion, the gospel is so powerful. 
It's so, so exhilarating when you learn how to digest it. That's right. When you learn how to munch on it. But, but, but when you do that, then your life becomes worthy of the gospel. But, but many, many of us, we're we not worthy of the gospel. Amen. The only time we praise God is on Sunday morning. The only time we talk to him, but well, we really don't, some of us don't even talk to him. We let the deacon talk for us or, or the pastor talk for us. When you develop a relationship with God, uh, you're going to want to talk to him. Uh, and, and as you get spiritually close to him, uh, you have to watch yourself. The reason why you have to watch yourself because I, I find myself uh, uh, talking to God out loud. And I'm thinking that it's my sober thoughts. Amen. And all of a sudden, you know, somebody might come with, with a straight jacket and, and they want to take me away. Amen. But when you love God so much, you, you forget that you're not, you're not uh, saying it to yourself. You, you all of a sudden said it out loud. You're walking around. I, I, well, I just had to tell you the truth. When, when I was at the state meeting and the president came up to me and said, what you doing talking to yourself? I was, I was just walking through the lunch line, you know, praising the Lord. Didn't know. I thought I was talking, you know. My I didn't think my lips was moving. I was enjoying talking to the Lord. And then he said, oh, 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 I'm, I'm telling my sober thoughts, huh? So I had to, I, I explained to him, and he understood then that, oh, well, I'm praising the Lord. And, uh, but I think he was giving me a sign, you know, the whole, even Christian folk are looking at you crazy, boy. You better watch yourself. <laughs> But you ought to develop that type of relationship where you enjoy the conversation with God. That, that, that's the reason why when you, when you learn how to enjoy a conversation with, with God Almighty, uh, then, then you find out that it just becomes natural. You, you wonder, well, how can he pray for an hour? How can he pray for two and three hours? Well, I just talk to him as if he's there. Amen. I mean, I, I love talking to God and, and you ought to develop that conversation with the Lord because when you do that, then you have that intimate relationship. Amen. And then God comes through for you. Now, in the book of Philippians, amen, we find out in the book of Acts, amen, the apostle, the apostle Paul, uh, he went, uh, he, he was commissioned. Mm -hmm. He was commissioned to go uh, to, to Macedonia, mm -hmm. amen, and, and it said that he was sleeping and, and there was a vision of a man and, and it spoke to him and told him that he needs to go to uh, Macedonia or, or, or Macedonia. And so he gets up and he obeys and, and you know he has an entourage with him so he's just not going by himself. So when he hears something, the folks got to believe him as well, amen. And so they get up and they go there and they end up in uh, Philippi. And Philippi is a Roman colony and it's a leading city of that district of Macedonia. So while they're, while they're there, amen, we have the conversion of Lydia. This takes place at Philippi, but she's from Thyatira. Amen. And she's a seller of purple. Amen. She's a businesswoman. She, she makes money, y'all. Amen. She, she, she knows how to handle things. And this seller of purple, you know, uh, sell, selling of purple, amen, uh, they, they have to go down by the riverside to have them church. Amen. And now, now they're not going down there because, it, you know, it's so, so serene and so quiet. And, and they're not going down there to skip rocks or nothing like that, y'all. But they going down there is because they can't find 10 men to have a synagogue. So you got to have at least 10 men in order to have a synagogue. But, but these women, they want to have them some, some Jesus anyhow. So they go down by the riverside. So while they're down there by the riverside, they praise the Lord, talk, talking to the Lord. Amen. And I'm sure their voices are probably just, just bouncing off of those waves there. Amen. And, and, and God is hearing them. And, and, and God, some way, somehow, God always fixes things. Amen. In the midst of their prayer, God sends Paul and Silas by. Amen. Don't God know how to do it? Amen. Women, y'all can get together. Y'all can start praising the Lord. And God will send a preacher by. All right. 
So the, the preacher comes there and he, and he begins to give them the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not watered down like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He, he, he gives them strong meat and they come, they, their spirits are soaring and they want to they receive what they have to give. And so they receive salvation. All right. mm -hmm. Now it's been too long. Some churches have been too long. Folks not getting saved anymore. Amen. 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 It's because the gospel of Bible probably have been watered down. All right. You know, we're trying to get too much like the world. Uh, instead of clapping our hands, we pop our fingers. <laughs> instead of rocking to and fro, we rock this way and that way. <laughs> We, get, we, we, we got to make sure we keep things holy. Even our kisses, it said, greet one another with a holy kiss. So make sure that when you're putting your lips on, folks, make sure it's holy. Or keep your lips to yourself. So they're at Philippi and having a wonderful time and God sends the preachers by and they get saved and this, this, this woman called Lydia, she wants to bless them, say, stay at my house, you know. Now she ain't going to ask them to stay at her house if she got a shack, y'all. So she's evidently rich and she can take care of the whole entourage, everybody there she can take care of. Uh, but in the midst of staying at her house, they're able to minister to the people in that area. And they begin to minister and they, and they begin, to, begin to talk about Jesus. And, and then the devil shows up. Now, now the, the devil is slick, y'all. The devil can be so slick that you don't even know he's the devil in the house. Because this devil's going around, he's speaking the truth, but he's doing it in such a way that it's causing disturbance. He says, this devil says, this woman, this, this woman says, these men are the son of, they are, are the, son of the most high God. They, they, he's telling the truth, but he's, they, they're doing it in such a disruptive manner. And then, and then Paul let this go on for days. And then finally, his spirit got vexed and he had to deal with the situation. Church folks, don't always have your pastor deal with the situation. You ought to be able to deal with some stuff as well. He, he carries too much of a load trying to, trying to take care of you. Uh, you grown now and you're still in your diapers? No, no, no. You handle some business. <laughs> Quit sucking on y'all spiritual bottles. Take care of some business. Take some load off of the pastor. He don't need to take care of everything. Why well, need pastor to pray for me? Are you a dick? You know how to pray? You need to pray. We, 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 we worry the pastor and the wife just too much. And, and some of us walk in here with the Jezebel spirit. Now the Jezebel spirit, it can be, it can be a man or, or a woman. A Jezebel spirit will manipulate. A Jezebel spirit will flatter. A Jezebel spirit will step in and play like they're your best friend. And then a Jezebel spirit loves idolatry and immorality. A Jezebel spirit will kiss you without a holy kiss. We have to watch out for the Jezebel spirit. And you have to protect your pastor, your pastor's wife, his family. And you got to protect yourself from the Jezebel spirit. Many times you can recognize the Jezebel spirit if you have your ears open. Because eventually once they get in and get through flattering, they begin to dominate. They, 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 they want everything their way. They will manipulate. The Bible calls it witchcraft. Witchcraft taking place all over the church. You know, in the book of Revelation, Ephesus, uh, Ephesus and Smyrna, those were the first two churches, you know, and, and in Smyrna, there was a lot of, lot of death going on. Uh, the, the, the emperors were killing Christians. Uh, they were, matter of fact, they, they, they would light the Christians at night and put them on a pole so they can burn while they had a festival at nighttime. There was a lot of devastating things going on. But every time they killed one Christian, ten more would come up. So the devil got, got kind of smart. The devil, the devil decided, well, if I kill them, they, they, there's more to come back. 
So when we went to the church of Pergamum, that's when the devil joined the church. And he joined this church too. You just got to recognize him. And you got to learn how to rebuke him. Now a whole lot of stuff that y'all can do in y'all head, but sometimes you got to do it out loud. You know, the devil could be messing up and you can say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, you can do that to yourself. But, but sometimes he's so unruly, you just got to say it out loud. And as you do that, remember, remember the Bible, the Bible, the gospel gives us instruction. The reason why it's good news is good news to us. Not to the world. It's good news to us. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. But a lot of us find out we resist the devil and he don't flee. Why? Because we're not submitted to God. We sin more than the, than, than, than the neighbor next door. We can cuss better than him. That's right. We can drink the king of beers better than him. But you submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Wangelion. Now they're in Philippi. They're in Philippi. Wonderful things happen. Then dangerous things happen. Mm -hmm. When folks get saved, y'all better learn how to pray. Amen. When kids get delivered from drugs, y'all better learn how to pray. When, when folks are healed of schizophrenia and, and uh, necromancy and, 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 and healed from these, these mind diseases, amen, y'all need to pray. Right. Anytime your pastor goes somewhere and does a revival, as soon as that revival is over, y'all need to pray. All right. The reason why I say so because Ezekiel, he had a great revival. Remember he called fire down from heaven? Amen. And, 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 and when it was all said and done, uh, Jezebel decided that she told him, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> After he performed this great miracle, amen, he's exhausted. He's tired. He's been prayed through. He's exhausted. And, and what, what the church needed to do, what the Israelites needed to do, they needed to pray for Elijah. But since they didn't pray, Elijah was shaking. He was afraid. He even asked God to kill him. So what I'm instructing you to do as intercessory prayer warriors, as, as, as mature Christians, you don't, you don't suck on bottles anymore. We don't have to change your diapers anymore. You begin to pray for your pastor and wife. You take care of them. Because heaven moves in our behalf through our prayers. If y'all don't pray, ain't nothing happening. If y'all not praying, the devil is dominating your lives. You wonder why every now and then you say a cuss word and you wonder where that come from. You ain't praying. You got to protect yourself with your relationship with your father. You can't say he's your daddy and you don't even have no characteristics of him. You going around cussing and chewing and spitting and smoking. No, you don't represent him. You got to represent him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you represent him, he will represent you. That's right. Y'all remember when Stephen, when he was killed, the Bible says that Jesus stood up. Now, now, the Bible always said that Jesus sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, does it not? But at that time, it said Jesus was standing at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Why? Because a man was standing up for him down here on earth. Every time you stand up for God, Jesus stands up for you. We don't see that, but we got to recognize that in our spirit. He gives us example after example through the Bible. And as you, as, you, as you begin to stay in the spirit, then God will bring those things to your remembrance, the things that you've heard of him. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. He will bring those things as you need them. So don't go around trying to memorize the Bible. Don't, don't waste your time doing that. He will bring it back to your remembrance what you need to know. Is your life worthy of the gospel? The, the only way it's worthy of the gospel is if you have allowed the gospel to become a part of you. It, 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 progressive, you are pastor's life. Mm -hmm. 
He lives for you all. He will die for you all. He, he has to pray for you all. When y'all messing up, sometimes the Lord will give him a name. Some, don't worry about it. Sometimes he don't. He, he, he's so much in love with y'all, uh, God can tell him some ugly stuff y'all are doing and he won't tell nobody else. But he'll put it on the altar for you. Amen. And he'll cry for you. Amen. He won't even tell his wife about it, amen, because she may not be able to understand it. But he crying about it. And then when he sees you next time, hey, how you doing? Praise the Lord. I know you're blessed today. And know you've just been in some mess. That's what, because pastor's life is your life. He, he can't live with, he, he exists because of, he has to preach. He, he can't help it, y'all. Right. He has to preach. Right. Right. And if you run out on him, hey amen, he'll go to the woods and he'll preach to the rabbits. Because he got to preach. But it's so good that you come here every Sunday. To be able to let him be able to tell you what thus said the Lord. Because the Lord's preaching through him all week long. Yes, amen. And as, he, as he gets his sermon together and God has preached to him, he's ready to give it to y'all. But then that, that sermon don't supposed to come until six months later. <laughs> God keeps us confused all the time, y'all. But we go out and we present the gospel. Is your life worthy of the gospel? The only way it can become worthy of the gospel is you allow the gospel to, to, to resonate within your life. Mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 that you digest the word of God, that, that you allow it to lead and guide you, that you apply it to your life. Ain't no need in us getting up here telling you all these nice stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and, and tell you all that, and, and you don't even know how to handle it when you get in the fire. <laughs> Y'all got fiery trials all the time, and you just, oh, it's hot in here. <laughs> Jesus is there. Don't matter if it's hot or not. You're just getting your suntan. It's just for a moment. God's going to bring you through that trial and that tribulation. And everything's going to be all right. Yeah. One Gileon, right. the gospel. I know your life is worthy. And your life ought to shine, amen? Right. Your life ought to shine. Because life, amen, uh, in the beginning God breathed into us the breath of life. And in John it says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Is your light shining? Are you hiding yourself underneath something that you ought not be hiding yourself? You ought to let your light shine. On, it said you ought to let it shine before men that they may see your good works and they will glorify not you, but they will glorify the Father which is in heaven. And, and, and really when, it, when it's shining, you, you're not walking around glowing like they do on the cartoons now. But there's a spiritual glow that takes place in, and your spirit has a spiritual connection and you feel good around somebody. Amen. Hey, do, matter of fact, somebody can be dirty and smelly, but if they got Jesus in their life, amen, you will feel good around them. Heaven is always working in our behalf. We don't see it with the natural eyes, but many times God will give us the spiritual eyes and we will be able to witness the goodness of the Lord and, and, and where God is pleased with this situation and he's not pleased with that situation. Right. Reap the benefits that God has for you. I want to say congratulations to this, this wonderful man of God and this uh, lovely lady of God because, because you got to understand that when we minister, you know, ministers' wives when they first get in here. God ain't called me. You know, that's what normally 99.9% 99, 99 .9 of them say that. <laughs> they think that, they believe that when they say that. But after 10 or 15 years, they find out they're more into it than the preacher's into it. And, and, and so, the, so as, as the pastors call, they're called. Because they are as, as one. And, and being that oneness, uh, then progressive, they have become a part of you. So all of y'all twine together. Amen. Uh, y'all act like, he said, I act like, act like pastor. No, y'all act like pastor. You act like your coach. Right. You act like your leader. You ought to act like your leader. Right. Amen. You go represent, you're doing something wrong. Amen. That's the reason why he's really on, he, he really on these uh, associate pastors and associate ministers. Because if they go around acting a fool, they representing him and they representing you. 
So he has to put it out there now. Now, I done, I done gave you these instructions. Why are you going contrary to this? So thanks be to God that he's wrapped up and tied up and tangled up with y'all. Amen. And the good that he has, amen, you have. And the bad that you have, that's the reason why all of us need some Jesus. All of us have some bad stuff in us. And all of us need us some Jesus. You know why I trust Jesus? You know, I, I, can't, I can't trust Islamic. I, I can't trust Confucius. That confuses me anyway. Uh, Buddha, I can't, I, can't, I can't trust that. Because, because Jesus is the only one, and God, he's the only one that died for me. They didn't do no dying. Jesus died for me. And he didn't stay there. He got up with all power in his head. So, so every now and then when I feel dead, when I'm knocked down or, or feel like I'm knocked out, he always raises me back up. So, so I got to come to his house and tell everybody that he lives. He lives. He lives within me. So I've got to express of his, of his goodness. You know, sometimes I just grin all the time. Looks silly, but I just grin all the time. God just injected me with some joy, and I can't. Because God has been so good to me. When you get down and out, I'm, I'm trying to close it. When you get down and out, and, and your spirit is knocked down, and depression begins to dominate you, uh, here's what I want you to do. I just want you to start counting. Just count your blessings. Pretty soon you won't be able to see your fingers. Just count your blessings. And then all of a sudden that sadness will turn into joy. Unspeakable joy. I hope y'all happy right now. Because if y'all if y'all if y'all not happy, then I'm happy all by myself. Because it's good being in God's house. I'd like to say congratulations to this wonderful man of God and this woman of God. And I'd like to say congratulations to you, Progressive. Amen. Amen. To be able to hold on to a pastor for 26 years, you know, that's a miracle in a lot of places. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that y'all are keeping on with this miracle uh, because y'all have a wonderful, wonderful family that's taking care of y'all. They truly love you. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. Oh, I do need to open up the doors of the church. Hallelujah. Now, last time I was here, I said Second Baptist. I'm going to try not to do that this time. Amen. We're at Progressive. Amen. And we're really thoroughly enjoying ourselves. Amen. And we're so glad that Progressive that you uh, make us feel like we're at home. So if I say Second Baptist, that's because we feel like uh, we're at home. But I know that I'm at, I'm at Progressive. Amen. And so glad uh, everyone always know their places. The deacons are all ready. Amen. And we invite you to come accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior if you have not done that. Hope the gospel has touched your spirit. Amen. It's blessed your soul and that you need uh, Christ in your life. Uh, because the truth of the matter is if you leave this earth and you uh, breathe your last breath without Christ, uh, uh, heaven is not your home, you will uh, go to hell. Uh, and uh, we don't want that. You're here with an opportunity. God has you here to be able to make heaven your home. If you have not done that, we invite you to do that now.